It was divine justice that we met in spring and fell in love in summer. This law, descended from heaven, enables the new lovers to warm themselves at the sunshine of their hearts, and so it happens that all autumns become springs and all winters become summers at the moment when two lovers embrace each other for the first time with their eyes. We were clean and young, hopeful and clean. We were strong, proud, slim and clean. We were smiling, careful of our demeanor and clean. We felt that our days were getting full of intimate moments, splinters of posy that opened our human core to the infinite. And every time our hands would stretch out to seize themselves, embracing as if to say goodbye, a sensation of silk seemed to be running through the fingers. A perfume of lavender, soft and lucid, emanating from our necks. A scent of home. If paradise has a scent, this must be the one. We were there, present to ourselves, to our own story, reliving it by loving each other. We were so involved that we did not hear our forefathers' screams at night, nor did we hear them telling us to run away. We were just clean, and we liked to dance close to each other, and that was just enough. When the season changed, we never imagined that the very cold winter would have been as soft as the sun in spring. We never imagined that a camp could exist. For generations, we were used to moving, to traveling, to escaping, but never to being enclosed, confined to a camp extermination. We were used to being separated by land, by country border, but we were not ready to be separated in our spirits. We were shocked when we were pushed inside the same wagon. In this crucible of fear, anger, and thirst, we kept ourselves embraced. From our necks, we could sense the perfume of our skin together with that warm perfume of lavender. That perfume, should paradise have one, could well have been that of a home of courage. That perfume was also surprising because we were still clean. A miracle indeed. Dead three times. The first was absolutely the most unexpected one. After hours of travel in the dark, we arrived at the camp. It was night. The door was opened. That obscure light startled us while we were descending down the wooden steps. So blinding and menacing was the light. There were screams of people, pushing, kicking, being hit, bodies hitting one another aimlessly. But there was also a sense of comradeship, an attempt to avoid hurting people, elders, children, to somehow find space for the instinct of survival. In the oppressive presence of all of this, we were missing. It was at that moment that I started to die. Quickly, the first days went by. Quickly went by the days of adapting to the law of the camp. Quickly went by the days of growing thin. Quickly went by the days of hope. Quickly went by the days I lost my cleanliness. Never went by the days that changed me from being we into being me. And this compulsory, heroic obligation to be myself was so painful that it caused me not even the least suffering. I certainly know when the other part of we died. And I was not that part. I know that because I felt my hands were stretching out to seize themselves as if silk was flowing through my fingers. It was afternoon when that sensation suddenly vanished. It was afternoon when I felt that I would never be able to be we again. It was afternoon when I died for the second time. The second death was surely the most painful. Paradoxically, from that moment on, the situation improved. Yes, indeed, because from that instant of irrefutable reality, I lost any desire whatsoever to continue to be alive. From that instant, there was no need for forks or soap, no more need to exchange at the black market. From that instant, one had to wait only for the third dying moment. It was afternoon when this desire became reality. All those who needed a shower were taken, none having any doubts about what was about to transpire. We were all males, all adults. Thanks to God, there was no one there too young to die. When the door to the shower room opened, I walked in holding your hand. And a tiny glimpse of smile appeared on my lips. Then the big door closed behind me, and I felt as if being pulled by that hand. Among all those poor, naked bodies, it seemed to me that you, my beloved, were guiding me to a corner of that room 
You were smiling at me. You looked at me. At that moment, I heard the gas being diffused into the room, and the odor of the gas was tangible. And with the same embrace that many people used to say goodbye, you altered that odor of death into the scent of a home. From our necks originated a perfume of lavender, soft and lucid, a perfume of future. If paradise has a perfume, this must be the one. If paradise has a perfume, this must be the one. If paradise has a perfume, this must be the one. The perfume of paradise is this. It was the third time for me to die. I was not alone, and I was again clean.